Carrie Bauer, who is the chocolatier from Soho Sweets with us today. Thanks for coming, Carrie, on Yeg Talks. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's a beautiful day to come yeah. out. Yeah. And we just finished up Easter. So Easter was yesterday. So how much chocolate did you make for Easter? Oh, my goodness. The chocolate bunnies and the eggs and the caramels that I make. Just, it's, it's a busy time. <laughs> Carrie shows up here for, her, for the podcast with a bag full of chocolate eggs for my daughter. <laughs> Because, uh, what do people call you, Carrie? <laughs> a bit of a chocolate bully. <laughs> yeah. Can you, uh, what exactly does a chocolate bully, bully mean? What exactly does that mean? <laughs> well, I didn't realize it, actually, until you pointed it out, is that I push a, a lot of my chocolate on, on people, no matter what. They come into the stores, they come in, like, at a tasting, and I say, oh, no, have some. No, just have no. some. She goes, no, 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 you have to try it. Yeah, no, no, come here. It. Let me cut it out yeah. for you. Here it is. You have to have some. Okay, well, if you like that one, now you have to have this yeah. one too. Yes, and it's like, you know, I would probably sell more chocolate if I didn't give so much away. <laughs> and your chocolate is so different. Like, people will come, you know, we compare to what we know. Like, oh, it's, you know, it's like two bucks for a chocolate bar in the grocery store, and this one's so much more. But you have to try it because as soon as you taste it, you go, oh, I get it. Yeah. I get it. This is a whole different level of chocolate. And it is. Like, I've eaten a lot of crappy chocolate over the years, and it's been waxy, and, like, sometimes you, you literally spit it out. I look at my, my bars and the chocolate that I use. Like, I use Calibo chocolate from Belgium. It's, um... So it's really high-end chocolate, and then I also use their other line, uh, Cocoa Berry, so that's made in France. And I, th I believe now it's all owned by the same company, but I really, like, it's beautiful chocolate. It melts in your mouth, the flavor is well-balanced, and it's not overpower, like, it's not overpowering, and it's not really sweet, and it's, it's smooth. I love it. And so, yeah, the chocolate bar is more of experience more of an experience for me because it's not just a chocolate bar where you rip open the package right it's more you know like it's almost like it's like gift wrapped it is yeah. like i've always thought of my stuff as more gifting mm -hmm. like because i guess i've always thought of chocolate as something that you you only have for special occasions or you you give it to you like you give it to people right it's a gift or you receive it whatever I've gone to New York a few times because the chocolatier that I trained under, the master chocolatier, is from Newark, New Jersey. And so it's just out of Manhattan. So I've seen a lot of great packaging. So packaging was a big deal to me. So when I came around to make my, my bar wrappers, I wanted them to be bright. I wanted them to have a story. And so, you know, when you have my chocolate bar, it's there's a story to it as well. Like you can open up a wrapper on my classic collections and you can see, you know, a soul saying to help you through your day. So, you know, there's, it's an experience eating them. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the price point is different because, you know, you're going to feel something pleasant after you eat it. And it's not mass produced. You hand make all of this chocolate yourself. I do. You, you hand make it, you pour it in the molds, you wrap it. Everything is, is, is done by hand. And it does take time. Yeah. Like, we, we try to reduce the time. Um, so, you know, with respect to polishing the molds, I'm getting quicker with some, you know, I now use a, an electric what, drill. <laughs> what do you mean? What is, what is polishing the molds? What does that mean? So, for me, a big part of presentation and a big part of artisan chocolate is how it looks. So, I'm looking for it to shine because that contributes to that experience and to the quality of, of the piece. So a lot of people will just use the bar over and over, or the bar mold over and over, and then it gets kind of dull, but I like it to shine. So what I do, I'll polish it with, um, I have an electric drill, and I, I use that to polish the molds and then I have to go through again. So do you have a little like buffer thing on the end of your drill bit and you, and you buffer your molds? Yeah, oh. I do. So polishing molds, that's really interesting, and that makes the chocolate shiny. Mm -hmm. So what are some other characteristics about chocolate that makes it like the best quality that you can produce? Okay, first of all, is it's the quality of the chocolate that you're buying. That you and, start with. Yeah, that you start with. Like, there's no wax in this, and that's 
a lot of people will say to me, oh, I've made chocolate and I've never had to polish the molds. And it's like, well, that's because you're using a different chocolate that probably has more wax in it mm. or has wax in it. And that's really common. And that's what gives it its shine and you don't have to worry about it. Well, the chocolate that I use, it doesn't have wax. So once it's tempered. What does tempered mean? So that's, that's the biggest thing. Like I always say chocolate's the boss. Like if it isn't tempered properly, then you've got streaks, uh, you get bloom, you get all these different things that go wrong with the finished product. And, and it's so all about- So what, what is tempering? Okay, so when, um, also, so I have, I'm, I'm really lucky to have a temperer. So you put in, uh, on the one side, you end up dropping in, like say, I don't know, 1500 grams of, I'll, I'll call them chocolate chips, but they're called Colette's. And so I'll put in about 1500 grams of Colette's and then it melts it, it brings it to a temperature that it melts. So it will go up, say for dark chocolate, it goes to 122 degrees. And then once it reaches that point, I have to put in um, a piece of solid chocolate to seed it, to bring it back down to um, where the molecules, both the sugar and the fat molecules, combine and they attach. So if they don't, so if you don't have enough time, if you try to speed it up by, you know, say putting on a fan to bring down the temperature quickly without like with less movement, because it's all about keeping, decreasing the temperature and having that constant movement. Mm. And if one of those is expediated in some way, then more than likely your chocolate, when the machine says it's done, it isn't done. So how can you tell if it isn't done? <laughs> Does that take the chocolatier's eye? Uh, yeah, I used to think that, so to become, to call yourself a chocolatier, you need 10,000 hours. And I, I swear, it's 10,000 hours of mistakes. Mm. And it's, it's crazy because you think that it looks great because it looks so good, all melted, it's going around and it just, oh, you just want to eat it, right? Because it looks so smooth, but you don't want it to be smooth. You actually, you want to see those little particles that will solidify. So once I used to just think, oh yeah, the machine says I used to trust the machine, but chocolate's the boss and you cannot trust the machine. So now I like I take a little piece of paper and you do a paper test. And so I just take my parchment paper, dip it in and wait, depending on the chocolate. Like if it's dark chocolate, I wait for a minute. And if it solidifies, that means it's tempered. But if it takes a really long time to solidify, that means it isn't tempered properly because it like, again, it's, it should only take a certain amount of time to bring those molecules back together. Mm, like to solidify them, to make yeah, the chocolate solid yeah. again. And then if it takes, say if it were to take five minutes instead of a minute to solidify, then that means if I've molded the chocolates, like if I put the chocolate in the mold, I'm not gonna find out until after I'm done the whole batch mm. that my chocolate wasn't tempered to the state it needed to be. And then you have to start all over again? Mm. How long does it take you to make like one batch of chocolates, chocolate bars? Chocolate bars, it takes me about, um, so I make 35 bars and um, it now takes me about two hours. Two hours to make a batch. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the bars now, but you also make bonbons. Yes. And to me, to me, when I hear the word bonbon, I think like candy, like yeah. really crappy sugar, hard candy. So tell me what a bonbon actually is. Okay, well, I call them bobons because I live in Beaumont. Mm -hmm. So I figured that was kind of, uh, you know, that's what I was gonna go off of. I'm from Beaumont and uh, I'm gonna just have a little bit of a play on words. So I did that. Now what it is, is it a bon a, like a traditional bonbon is something that is um, cream filled. Like it's a cream filled chocolate. Okay. And so what, I'm doing with mine is um, I use whipped cream and chocolate 
And so I'm melting the chocolate and I'm using whipped cream, which I either infuse with um, loose leaf tea or I'm infusing with uh, alcohol spirits. So that's where I'm pulling the flavor from. And then I'm mixing that with chocolate and then piping it into... Um, piping and what is that cream that you're making? What is that called? It's called ganache. Ganache. So it's like a ganache, a flavored ganache yes. filled covered in chocolate. Yes. Yeah. And but you so, use the word enrobed. Yeah. I, so it kind of just depends. So like when I mold a chocolate, like so when I pour the, the tempered chocolate in molds, I... I let it sit and then I'll um, dump, up, dump it out and if after a little bit of time, just like I said, it takes about a minute to solidify. So after about a minute, I can dump that chocolate out and it will, the edges will have all solidified. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, I giggled because back when I was a kid, there used to be um, a commercial called, it was for the caramel bar mm. and it was always like, What's the caramel secret? You know how do they get the caramel yeah, in the bar? Exactly, yeah. and then here every time I swear every time I I make it, I like when I'm doing my molds and I'm I'm uh, like enrobing the chocolate. I just giggle because it, that's the caramel secret. I I let it sit. I pour out the chocolate and then I'll take the ganache that I made and I'll put it in the piping bag and I'll fill all the. All the, the little shells. Yeah, the little shells. And then once that is solidified enough, I'll just top it again with some more tempered chocolate. Just a, a thin, thin piece. Because again, that's that's what the experience is. You want it to be thin. Like so a you have the right ratio of out of chocolate yeah. shell and then your ganache filling. Yeah, because you you want the thin like you want the outer shell to be thin enough that it snaps. Okay, so oh, that snap. Tell me more about the snap. Yeah, so the snap is really important because, again, it's part of that experience. So when you look at my chocolate, first of all, you're going to notice the shine. You know, for, so the bobo is going to be, it's going to be shiny, and then it should be, it should be thin enough, but not too thin that it will melt. Like if it's sitting on a counter. Like you don't want it to be too thin. And that's actually my biggest problem. I've never had problems with making my shells too thick. They're always a little too thin. And that's, I giggle at like the lady that I uh, trained under, she just laughs because like, that's not a common problem. It's usually the other way around. Because if it's too thick, then it doesn't really, you don't get enough ganache. You don't get that proper bonbon experience, right? Yeah, and then there's no consistency either on the inside of that shell. Because you want it to be even. It's it's all part of that that mouthfeel. Right. So when so that that's why I'm I'm very careful. So if I find that that bobo is too thick, um, I'll just bang it, and that chocolate eventually just keeps on coming out. And but if I haven't paid enough attention, and I've again put the ganache in, top the chocolate. And then find out after that that top part is just a little too thin. They're garbage. They're, They're duds. duds. Yeah. And we have to eat them. <laughs> yes. White chocolate kind of has a bad rep. Oh, it really does. And a lot of a lot of people, because our cream of Earl Grey chocolate bar is in the white chocolate, and everybody's reluctant. Yeah. I always I don't really like white chocolate. Yeah, I've tasted some really crappy white chocolate. And, and so I get where people are coming from. Mm -hmm. And so like having the cream of Earl Grey bar is like, I shock myself at how much I eat. It's spectacular. You know, but again, it's Calibo chocolate. So it, it makes all the difference and it's not overly sweet. Again, it doesn't have that wax. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's, it's ideal. And again, I think that's, you know, that's what makes it that treat because, mm -hmm. you know, like it's, it takes you, you can sit and enjoy it. It melts in your mouth and you can have the, the scent of the, the bergamot oil. And it just, you know, it's a whole tasting experience. And mm -hmm. To me, oh, that's what I want. But, you know, when I eat the duds, it's kind of, it's beyond that. <laughs> um, so what exactly is white chocolate? Because there's a big debate about yeah. white is white chocolate chocolate. What's what's the deal? What is white chocolate? 
you know, white chocolate isn't chocolate. All it is is uh, it's the cocoa butter. So it's not the cacao, like it's not the cacao mass, it's the cacao butter. But it's from the same plant. It is from the same plant. Okay. But, and it's from it the has, same bean pod, right? Yeah, it's, but it's just the butter. It doesn't, and chocolate has to have chocolate. So just like the ruby chocolate that I have, the pink chocolate, that's not called chocolate either. It's called couverture because chocolate needs to have chocolate in it. And all right. so all, all of those other ones, like they're, they're kind of classified as couvertures and they have um, the, cocoa, the cocoa butter, like cacao butter, and then, you know, a lot of milk products, mm. you know. And, and usually, well, because it is white chocolate, added sugar. Right, but your, so, your white, that's why, and that's why most people have a bad rep and a bad relationship with white chocolate is because it has all this extra added stuff and it makes it overly sweet and just, it's too much and it's not very good quality. But so, so what's different about the white chocolate that you use? Well, for one, it's not waxy, but I, I have to say that I, I've evolved since I started. I used to use strictly um, Calibo white chocolate for my ganache. And now I use Cocoa Berry, which is the Zephyr mm -hmm. white chocolate. And it's, again, it's less sweet, it's smoother. Like so it's, it doesn't have that added sugar in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just, again, I, I have to go back to that taste experience. It's not, you don't feel the sugar in your mouth like you do sometimes with, you know, the stuff you buy off the shelf. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, I, I think we can all, I think we all have some experience in our mind where we did, you know, we've had really bad white chocolate mm -hmm. and we're like, oh gosh, no. And it just, it's a trauma response almost. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I really, and I really want the finest product, right? And I don't want, I want you to taste, I want my customers to actually taste the flavors. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you add more sugar, then you end up having to, use artificial flavors and like speaking of like natural versus artificial flavors i remember i was in your shop once during christmas and you're making some chocolate that had lime in it and i i you know i was like oh i guess maybe you use like that that lime juice that comes in the shape of a lime in the container but you were actually zesting a lime and you were putting the actual lime zest in yeah. and i tried it and it was like yeah that's that is real proper lime and it makes all the difference well you get the authentic flavors right yeah and you end up like, it's funny because I have used lime juice, like just by squeezing the lime into mm. the ganache, which unfortunately makes it curdle. Mm, so the acidity, right? Yeah. But if you use the lime zest in the cream, the oils come out of the zest because that's where the oils are. Mm -hmm. And so that infuses the cream, right? But as soon as you use that fresh lime, you're getting the authentic flavor and that just depending on what you're pairing it with. Like I think, what was, oh, weren't we making, oh yeah, we were making, I know exactly which one we were doing because we were using the Yagila from Rehan, their version of tequila. Right. And I was making a lime margarita. And I had tried it before. I do have lime oil, but it's just not the same. You keep talking about Rehan uh, spirits now, but it, they're not boozy chocolates, right? Because yeah. sometimes you think like the alcohol chocolates and you bite into it and it's really like alcohol burny, yeah. but your chocolates are not like that. Yeah, we all have this uh, this memory, right? Of tasting those alcohol bottles that were really waxy and, and they would have the alcohol inside and you would think, oh great, you know, I remember being younger, uh, yeah. we'd get them at Christmas time and people would give them to us and we would eat them and think that they were just the best because they were alcohol filled. Well, my chocolates aren't like that. <laughs> no, no, they're not. You can't actually taste the alcohol at all. No, and I, I often say they're not boozy, they're bougie. I think, what is it? I think I have about um, a half an ounce of alcohol in 100 chocolates. Right. So you because have you're to really, eat a lot. You're really just, yeah, when you eat the Rig Hand, the Rig Hand Collection uh, Bobons, they don't taste like alcohol, but you can taste like the, the specific flavors that are in the alcohol, yeah. which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. And 
and it just it holds better in the chocolate like because it's really hard to pull flavors and some don't like some don't hold at all and it's like yeah okay i'm not even gonna play with that anymore all right like but it is nice that you know they have a a strawberry rhubarb vodka and it smells beautiful and it just takes me back to the days when we always were making strawberry rhubarb pie and so what i do is i'll enhance that not with strawberry but just with the rhubarb and so i you know i dehydrate some of my own rhubarb and then i enhance that and then again i'm hoping for um my customers that eat them they you know remember you know have that spark some sort of memory about rhubarb you know be it you know if you're sitting on the well <laughs> sitting on the front step dipping it in sugar because that's how i grew up but like it's it's all part of it and that's what i want to do mm -hmm. when i make the chocolate right i really want i want it to like spark some memories and you know hopefully positive <laughs> mm -hmm. so your your chocolate shop is called soul house sweets yes can you tell me more about that name and why you named your chocolate shop oh, that dog it is so funny okay right before covid um so back in march of 2019 um we had i had gone to um i had gone to uh some convention in, in Manhattan and it was like for, I don't know, I think it was a fancy food show. I can't remember what it was, but um, there was a winter storm and all the planes were canceled. And so none of the speakers showed up to the conference. Okay, there was like an inch of snow. It was ridiculous and the whole city was shut down. And so I was planning on going to this one and the only speaker that showed up was this other lady and she talked about pivoting and I'm like what and she's like you can still have like I used to have a cafe and so our cafe was labor intensive um, because it, we cooked everything in front of people it was all fresh food and my kids were kind of aging out and I wasn't too sure well what am I gonna do you know, I don't really want to have other people working in here and have to raise other people's kids and all of that stuff. And, and you know, we were kind of pricing ourselves out of the market because our prices were, were high and food costs continue to go up. So I'm in this thing <clears throat> listening to her talk about pivoting. And she says, you keep one foot firmly planted and you move around to see if you can take a better shot. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like my kids played basketball. So like I visualized it right away. And I'm like, I can still do what I'm doing, but I can pivot and take a better shot. And before I left that room, well, as soon as I walked out of that room, I had my name for my chocolate and it was Soul House Sweets. 